So hello, my name is Perry Johnson and today I get to be the opening act in a three-part update from TG275. And my role here is to introduce the topic covered by the task group, which is the physics plan and chart review. I'm going to start by going over some of the rationale for this work, and then I'll look at some of the recent literature discussing things like automation, smart systems, and the future of chart checking. So I'd like to uh, at least introduce the members of our task group. The chair is Eric Ford, who's a uh, known expert in patient safety. Many of the people here come from the working group on the prevention of errors, but we have some from outside groups such as Brian Napolitano from the AAMD. We have members from small, uh, small clinics and large academic settings, and we are well represented by having eight women on the group. And today, uh, Luis and the ever mysterious Debbie Schofield are here. So why is this important? Why would the APM commission this task group? Well, I wanted to start by showing the results of this study where the authors looked at 4,000 near-miss incidents and categorized them based off of the type of check that could have caught and prevented the error. And what the data show are that the physics weekly chart check and initial plan check are the two most effective checks at preventing patient errors. What the data also show is that the effectiveness of these are only between 40 and 60 percent, and so there's plenty of room for improvement. And so besides representing a fundamental safety check, the physics plan and the weekly chart review are tasks that are practiced universally across clinics, where you're in a small hospital or a large hospital, we all check charts. It's also an integral part of a therapy physics job description and represents one of only two CPT codes dedicated for medical physicists, which are CPT 77336, that's the weekly chart check, and CPT 77370, which is the special physics consultation. Chart checking is called for in numerous society-level publications, including ACR technical standards, astro practicus parameters, and various AAPM task groups. But with that being said, there's no specific guidance from the AAPM when it comes to the details of chart checking. We have consensus documents for model-based brachytherapy and robotic radio surgery, but not for something so fundamental and universal as the chart check. So TG40 does include some aspects of chart checking, things like daily dose, total dose, machine mode and energy, um, documentation, and they also provide a nice universal theme where they say that the consistency, or the plan should be consistent from prescription to plan to SIM sheet to MU calculation to daily record. And so what's being spelled out in this document is a pre prescriptive approach that focuses on technical parameters, documentation, and interplan consistency. And so if the purpose of our task group was just to update this list, there would be plenty of material to include considering uh, the changes that have occurred in our clinics. Now we have IMRT and VMAT, adaptive radiotherapy, cone beam CT, and the list goes on and on. Um, and also considering this task group was published in 1994 when I was only 11 years old. And so besides updating a list of items to check, we wanted to go a little bit further because there's also been a change in the way that we approach quality management. With the introduction of TG100, the new emphasis is on risk-based assessment. And so part of our task group's pri uh, priority is to provide that type of approach. And so uh, with that in mind, these are the, the charge of the task group to review existing data and recommendations, basically do a literature review, to survey information on current practices, to provide risk-based recommendations to the membership and to the vendors. And we cover external beam therapy, brachytherapy, protons, looking at the initial uh, plan review, the weekly chart check, and the end of treatment chart review. And today I'm going to be discussing point one here, and Luis and Debbie are going to be discussing uh, the second aspect. And so I mentioned that there's some broad uh, guidelines from the ACR and ASTRO, and so this is an example of what the recommendation looks like. Medical physicists must develop a chart review protocol. We should review new and modified treatments, assess the accuracy of the information, as well as the completeness and clarity of record. A chart review must occur weekly, and we should also do a chart review within one week of the end of treatment. And so that's, that's it. And, and besides TG40, which we've already discussed, there's, there's not much else out there in terms of specifics. And so for the purposes of this talk, these are five aspects that I consider fundamental to the initial plan review, which are a check of the technical parameters, looking at data transfer and interplan consistency, making sure the documentation is correct and that communication is clear. And then I've added two more aspects that aren't included in TG40, which are plan quality and clinical decision making. And the latter aspect includes things like contouring, image registration, and treatment approach, which require some type of higher level knowledge assessment. And so for the rest of this talk, I'm going to discuss some of the newer literature and how it pertains to some of these um, aspects, also provide a little bit of a historical perspective, and look at tools that are available that are already native to our current systems, some custom software solutions, and some vendor-provided solutions that allow us to be more efficient. 
So we call our, our check a chart check because prior to electronic medical records, there, we actually had a paper chart. The plan and the prescription were printed documents that were then hole punched and added to a three ring binder. The chart would move from dosimetry to physics, and then during treatment, the chart would go to the therapist where they would record manual parameters. Um, during a weekly chart check, the chart would move back to physics, and the physicist would then do a visual inspection comparing what was recorded versus what was expected. And so because everything was manually recorded, random transcription errors um, were frequent, and a large part of the physicist's effort was spent checking for these random transcription errors. Now shift forward to the, the current day, and now we have a variety of software systems, like electronic medical records, record and verify systems, treatment management software, such that the occurrence of random transcription errors has decreased, while at the same time the detectability for many of these types of errors has increased. And so what I'm showing here is a tool that's available in, in ARIA under the treatment history tab, uh, and it lists what the expected parameters are and then what the recorded parameters were for each of the treatments. And what's really nice about this tool is that it's color coded. Any deviations from the baseline show up as either yellow or red um, based off of the type of to uh, parameter and the tolerance set. And so I really like this tool and I really pay attention to the couch parameters because if the patient's indexed, they provide you an easy way to determine if the patient was in the correct location during the treatment. And in particular, I like to look at the couch vertical because regardless of if the patient was indexed, that couch vertical should remain relatively constant. So this is a great tool. It takes away that we check charts in the paper world and ports it over to the world of EMR. It was a visual inspection of technical parameters then and it's a visual inspection of techno technical parameters now. So that worked great until we uh, installed a true beam in our clinic with a 60 couch and dynamic jaws. And so now there's a variety of things that I can't check anymore because the couch uses a pitch and no longer reports the couch vertical in a reliable way. And because it uses dynamic jaws, I can't look at my Y jaws anymore because that's something that's changing. And so we already went through this transition once with IMRT where it became impossible to check um, control points. And so I think that as we move forward, um, we're going to become more reliant on sophisticated software solutions to check parameters that we always thought were very simple. And so now I'm going to go over some of the literature that's touching upon custom software solutions. And so the first system is called CATERS. It was developed by researchers at the University of Iowa. Uh, the purpose of CATERS was to allow the physicists to spend more time investigating errors and less time searching for them. Um, it was implemented looking at, by pulling information out of the Mosaic EMR and the Electa RNV systems, and it provides a variety of checks for technical parameters, inconsistencies in delivery, overrides, and, and, and checking for documentation. And so what's really nice about this system is that it was designed and improved through incident learning. Whenever an error was caught in the clinic, the type of check that could have prevented that error was added to the database. And so in that way, it's continually being improved. And it's also a smart system from the standpoint that it can be accessed via a smartphone and it can also be accessed on demand. The second system comes from researchers at the University of Michi Michigan. It's called the Plan Checker Tool. The goal of this system was to allow the physicist to decrease the amount of time checking mundane details and spend more time checking plan quality. So if you remember back to my previous slide, plan quality was an aspect that wasn't included in TG40. So it was designed with lean thinking in mind, meaning that efficiency and safety were built into the workflow, and it provides a variety of different technical checks. Um, and what I'm showing here on the bottom left is a graph which highlights the number of errors that occurred before the tool and after the tool was implemented. And on the right, it provides you a graph showing the number of delays that occurred before and after the introduction of a tool. Because if you can catch an error before it happens, then it doesn't propagate through your system. And so besides increasing um, patient safety, you also increase uh, the workflow efficiency. The third system comes from researchers at the University of, or Washington University in St. Louis, and it's called the Electronic Chart Check, or ECCHECK. And this system is amazing in terms of its size and scope. It uses 300 MATLAB program files, 40,000 lines of code, CSS files, PDF parsers, and a variety of other software systems. But at the same time, it really highlights one of the challenges faced by um, some of these systems, which is integration of multiple different types of data across various software platforms. And that's a problem that ultimately requires custom software solutions, which unfortunately smaller centers don't always have the resources to develop. 
And in publications about this system, they note that errors can be related to technical factors, clinical factors, or quality factors. And this system, like the previous two, is meant to check technical factors. And in the publication, they mentioned that the plan, uh, or that the electronic chart check is very good at looking at number to number comparisons and using some simple logical t testing, but there are many things that ECCHECK -check can't check. Um, I say that three times fast. Um, and we'll probably never be able to check things that require some type of higher level um, knowledge assessment to derive some type of abstract concepts. But for things that it can do, it's probably better than its human counterpart. And so in this way, um, automation allows us not only to spend more time searching for errors, or I mean, in investigating errors instead of searching for them, it also provides us um, more time to look at quality. But then here, it's showing that it also makes the process more robust overall. The fourth system is called the plan check and was developed by researchers at Massachusetts General. And so on the previous slide, I discussed how these systems are difficult for smaller clinics to develop. Well, the researchers here kept that in mind in developing a universal framework for assessing, um, checking, and displaying data. And the, the versatility of the system is afforded through the use of PDF parsing. And they make the argument that the physician doesn't sign the DICOM RT file, they sign the PDF. And so it's a PDF that should be checked against what is to be delivered. Um, and so they, they extract data from the PDF and compare it with the treatment management system. And, the, and because of this, they don't have to extract data from the treatment planning system itself or from ancillary secondary components. And so it reduces the need for some of the custom software from that standpoint. In the most recent publication about um, the plan check, they distributed this tool to eight different clinics and used it to catch errors. They then display the data based off of what type of error occurred and listed it as a histogram by binning versus institution. And by assessing the data, looking at peaks in the distributions, and by performing interviews with the local clinics, they were able to identify systematic deficiencies often related to um, not well-enforced policies or an underappreciation of system settings that are fundamental to the chart check. And so this is yet another motivation for automation in that it provides big data that can be trended and investigated to look for systematic weaknesses in quality management. The final custom solution here is called SWAN, and it was developed by researchers out of Australia. And SWAN is a little bit different in that it's not necessarily a check of technical parameters or documentation, but it's looking at plan quality, looking at things like the DVA statistics, and things like the conformity index. Um, SWAN was developed as a way to validate plans that were submitted to clinical trials. And because patients were on, on these protocols, there was a large degree of, of standardization in terms of contour naming, DVH objectives, and plan strategy. And so I know that several institutions um, try, to, to try to standardize, and they do some type of DVH analysis using um, third-party systems like MIM or simple Excel spreadsheets. This system goes one step further by actually looking at the PTV margins. They recreate the PTV based off of the GTV and using the standardized margin. They then compare that PTV with the one that was submitted uh, via the protocol. And so then they compare those two using some type of similarity metric. And so it goes one step further, I think, than something that we typically check. And this is afforded because everything is standardized. I now want to touch upon a couple vendor-provided solutions that relate to the initial uh, plan review and the weekly chart check. And the first one is called Mobius 3D and it comes from Mobius Medical Systems. And this software does a couple different things for the initial plan review. It provides a secondary MU deck, it checks some technical parameters, and it provides a comparison of the DVH um, statistics that were recorded in the plan versus RTOG protocols and TG um, uh, 101 parameters. On a fraction by fraction basis, it actually uses log file analysis to determine if the plan was delivered correctly. And so when I mentioned on the previous slide that as our treatments and plans get more complex, we're going to become more reliant on sophisticated software solutions, I think this is a type of program that's likely going to have to play a role. Sun Nuclear has a, a similar program called per fraction, and in addition to doing log file analysis, it uses the EPID, and they argue that the EPID um, provides a truly independent check of the treatment delivery system, and it reduces the need to rely on log files, which have been shown on occasion to derive incorrect leaf positions. And so in both this system and in the Mobius system, it's no longer a check of technical parameters, but you're looking at how any errors in those parameters manifest themselves in the dose distribution, which is shown as a DVH. And so it's a fundamentally different way to look 
to do a plan check or a, or a weekly chart check, and I think it's disruptive technology in a way. Another convenient feature about these systems is that they're web-based, which increases access, it reduces costs, and it improves the clinical workflow. And thinking about the future of chart checking, this is a paper that came out in 2014, and it touches on some of these topics. Uh, they note that automation can reduce costs, increase productivity, availability, reliability, and performance. And we've already seen how some of these have been realized in, um, in some of the cost, uh, custom software solutions. They also mentioned smart systems, things such as daily dashboards and local red flags that alert the user when an error has been detected. And through web-based integration, it's not difficult to see how this type of check could be, um, become standard in the way that we look at quality management. And a couple other points that I included here are what I'm calling big data and beyond the chart. And so big data includes things like statistical process control and Bayesian modeling. And I've included a couple papers here for anyone in the audience that might be interested in this. And going beyond the chart, um, I list here as comprehensive checking and going outside the bailiwick, which is a term that Eric Ford used on one of our calls. And I didn't know what it meant, and I had to go look it up. And it means going outside your sphere of influence. And so hopefully, maybe I just taught you a word as well. And so for going beyond the chart, let me give you an example. So we at the University of Miami recently introduced a view ray. And when I do initial plan check for view ray, there's many things that I can't check from the documentation or looking at the RNV. I actually have to go into the planning system, check things like the deformal image registration, which maps the planning CT to the, um, to the planning MR, things like contours or table placement. And so, again, there's just things that you can't check in the documentation that I have to go, and that's where I spend almost of my time is in the planning system. So I think this applies to other systems too, considering that things like image registration, margin creation, and contouring require a higher level human interaction in order to verify properly. And then for going beyond the chart, looking specifically at contouring, this study uh, looked at 40 lung SBR treatments and found that 17 of them um, had violations based off of their institutional guidelines. And I give you two examples of this in our clinic. In the first, we received outside records for a patient that was treated for a lung lesion next to the esophagus. And in reviewing the re records, it turns out that they contoured part of the lesion as esophagus. And so it was never treated, and thus that's why they came to us for a retreatment. In the second check, the physician contoured a lung lesion on the PET CT, but the registration was poor with the planning CT. And so when the physicist checked the chart, she saw that what she could see as, the, as the, the lesion was not being covered by the isotos lines, even though the deviation indicated that it was. And so in these instances, um, one of the errors was caught by physics and the other one wasn't. But in both cases, neither of them were caught by physician peer review, which is meant to be the primary safety barrier for this type of analysis. And so even though contouring is not on our bailiwick per se, it clear, clearly represents a high priority failure mode and something to consider moving forward. And so just to summarize, the physics plan and chart review represent a, a fundamental safety feature that improve safety, quality, and they help communicate our value to the clinic. The way we check charts is a volume, uh, evolving, and automation will likely play a role. Vendors are helping to fill those gaps as are larger institutions, which design systems that can be shared amongst clinics. And in the end, we need, may need to step outside our comfort zone in order to check high priority failure modes that will likely be identified through the FMEA performed by TG275, such as image registration and contouring. So thank you, we're gonna hold questions till the end of the three talks.